Welcome to my third installment of this series on setting up a full ECS infrastructure stack to orchestrate Docker containers. Hi, you're on Pablo's Spot. I'm George. Today's episode will be a show and tell on setting up the load balancer resources needed to support an ECS infrastructure that is based on EC2 instances. This same infrastructure will orchestrate the containers that are required to run a WordPress web application. And so, if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interests, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. So far, I've created Terraform modules from my core ECS right here, and also for my auto-scaling group. Today is all about load balancer and the other components that will expose the web application to the internet. So let me head to my terminal and then pull all the latest code on my local machine by running git pull. And then I'll create a new branch for today's changes. I've created load balancer module in another series on web proxy, which you can access right here. So hopefully I can quickly breeze through this module. So on the root of my workspace, I'll create a new directory and call it LB. And then I'll CD to this new directory. And then I'll run my script to create my template for my Terraform modules. And now if I head back to my Explorer and then expand on this new directory called LB, and then open my backend.tf and start updating the container for my Terraform state file. And then I'll open my main.tf and start writing the code for the resources that I need for my load balancer Terraform module. I'll start with the main load balancer resource. I've set an arbitrary name for this resource. Set the internal property to false since this needs to be accessible from the internet. And I've also set the load balancer type to application. I need to attach a security group resource to this AWS load balancer resource to define firewall rules. So let me create the resource. So the name and the description fields are the usual arbitrary fields. I have set an ingress block to allow inbound access from the public to my load balancer on port 443, which is a TLS port. And I've set an egress block right here to a setup that allows access to the public. And then lastly, I've set a name tag for this security group resource. With that security group resource created, I can then update the security group's property on my load balancer resource. So if I scroll all the way up. For the subnets property, I will derive the subnets associated to the default VPC. But firstly, I need to define the default VPC resource. Now that I have this default VPC resource defined, I need to create a data reference to the subnets associated to this default VPC. So what I need to do is open my data.tf and then set up that data reference. So what this data reference block does is it pulls out all the subnets associated to my default VPC. So now that I have this, I can now go back to my load balancer resource and then update my subnets property to point to that subnet reference. So with this load balancer created, I need to set up a listener resource. So all the way to the end of my main.tl. When creating load balancer listener resources, I usually set a default action that sends an unauthorized response, which should look like this. So what I need to do next is I need to associate this listener to my load balancer by setting the load balancer ARN property. Because I intend to strictly listen to TLS port and make my WordPress application secure, I will set relevant properties that make this possible, starting with port property, which needs to be set to 443. And then I need to set the SSL policy property with one of the latest security policies. 
I also need to set the TLS certificate ARN property. I will be attaching the domain-based URL for my WordPress application to the domain called publishspot.ga, which I have set up in the web proxy series, which you can access right here. This way, I can create a data reference that will pull the pre-existing certificates like this. So all the way to my data.tf. What this data reference will do is pull out the latest ACM certificate created for my specified domain, which in this case is getting the value from a variable. So let me head to my variables.tf and define this. And then back to my listener resource on my main.tf. I can now update the certificate ARN to point to the data reference that I've set previously. The next resource that I need to create is the load balancer listener rule. This will define the rules that are used to filter out requests that are eventually passed down to my EC2 resources for actual processing. The first property that I need to set on this resource is the listener ARN. I will point this to the listener resource that I created previously. And then I'm going to set the priority property for this rule to 10. And now I'm going to set a condition block that will evaluate the host header of a request before passing it through. I'm going to assign wordpress.publospot.ga on the values property. This means anyone who accesses this URL from the internet will satisfy this condition. And so the request will be passed down to the main web application running on my EC2 instance. And when this is satisfied, I will set the routing of this request using the action block. The target group ARN property needs to point to a new target group resource, which I need to create. I have set an arbitrary name for this resource. This resource will be talking to my Nginx container on my EC2 instance. So I'm going to set protocol property to HTTP. And then set the port property. I'm going to source the value of the port property to a variable. And because this is a new variable for this module, I need to define this inside my variables at here. I'm also going to set a default value for this variable and set it to 80. And now back to my main.tf for my target group resource. The next property that I need to set is the VPC ID, which I need to source from my default VPC resource. I also need to add health check block for this resource. As the name implies, this block will contain parameters that define how health checks are done and when to add or drop the instance from being provisioned for web request processing. So it will look like this. So this health check will use HTTP as a protocol and will perform health checks every 10 seconds and will also consider the Nginx container unhealthy after six unsuccessful checks. So now that I have a target group resource, I'll head back to my listener rule resource and update the target group ARN property. And last but not the least, I need to expose my load balancer to the public by creating Route 53 record. So this will end up being the URL that users in the internet will use to access my WordPress application. So all the way to the end of my main.tf. The first property on this resource is the zone ID, which needs to point to the hosted zone ID associated to my base domain. In order to set this reference, I'll head over to my data.tf. And then in here, I'll set the data reference that points to my existing hosted zone. The name property for this data reference block needs to point to the domain that I own, which in this case will be coming from the variable base domain. And then back to my main.tf. I can now update the zone ID to point to the data reference. The next property is the name property, which I will set to the string WordPress. And since I'm pointing this to an AWS resource, I'll set the record type to a record. And then I need to set the alias block to point this resource to my load balancer. 
And that's my Terraform module for my load balancer infrastructure. And as usual, let me validate this module. So if I open my terminal and then run Terraform init without backend, and then run Terraform validate. So I have an error here which complains about an undeclared reference to a resource. And this is probably just because of the name of the resource that I've used. So let's head over to my data.tf. And it's actually using default VPC VPC. So let's have a look at how I declared AWS default VPC resource. So on my main.tf. So right here, I've actually used default instead of VPC. So let me go ahead and fix that. And then now back to my terminal. I'm going to rerun Terraform Validate. So I'm getting another error here, which is similar to the first one. So let's go ahead and fix this. Let's head over to line 81 on main.tf. So now that that's fixed, back to my terminal. And then run Validate again. And all my configurations are valid. So all three elements of my infrastructure is done. So you've got the auto scaling group, the ECS component, and the load balancer resources. Because my WordPress application needs an RDS database, I will need to refactor my old WordPress Terraform module, which is currently sitting inside this DB directory right here. And so this is what I'm going to work on next. When all these are ready, I should be able to integrate all my modules and set up my Terraform to be able to spin up the entire infrastructure stack. So now I can push my changes to my Git repository. So let me head to my terminal. So I need to make sure that I'm in the root of my repository. So I'll see the one level up and then stage all my changes. Commit this to my local branch. And then push this to my remote repository for pull request. So now if I head to my browser and then go to GitHub, Head over to the Git repository for this series. And then create the pull request. And then if I scroll all the way down this page, I can change this to squash and merge. And then squash and merge my changes into main. That's it for now. Stay tuned as I tackle the next part where I put all of these modules together to stand up my WordPress application that's running on ECS infrastructure. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content of this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.